Welcome back to the Wardcast, guys. Hope you're all doing well out there. I am your host, Rod. In this video, we're going to be talking about the latest update, interesting update, on the Proud Boy Seditious Conspiracy Trial. And that is because uh, one of the lawyers for the uh, defendants here have requested that Donald Trump be subpoenaed as a witness to take the stand to explain his comments regarding what happened on January 6th. And they're asking for Donald Trump to be subpoenaed by the judge here because the primary defense of the Proud Boys has been they showed up there because Donald Trump asked them to. So it's not really their fault. It's Donald Trump's fault. Basically, blaming Trump has been the primary strategy for the Proud Boys attorneys here. It's not going to work, most likely. And these people will be convicted, just like the uh, Oath Keepers, both uh, groups of Oath Keepers were convicted of seditious conspiracy as well as other lower level crimes, which still hold a lot of prison time. Um, so the outcome is not going to be that different. But in this video, I'm going to explain why this is nothing more than a delaying tactic by the defendants here. And Donald Trump is not going to take the stand and the judge should throw this request out out of hand without even considering it because all it is is a delaying tactic. They know Trump is not actually going to answer any questions. His lawyers, Trump's lawyers, are going to tell him to take the fifth, even if he does somehow miraculously show up in court. Uh, and nothing is going get, to get done. You're going to waste weeks. So you might be asking, well, don't the Proud Boys have a Sixth Amendment right to confront Trump? And the answer is no, because Trump is not one of the witnesses against them. So a lot of people seem to be confused about the Sixth Amendment. So I'm going to explain that in this video. But uh, here's what they're doing. Proud Boy lawyer plans to subpoena Donald Trump in seditious conspiracy trial. Specifically, the lawyer for Joe Biggs is the one who's uh, doing this. And that's Norm Pattis here. You may remember him as one of Alex Jones's lawyers that got his license suspended for six months by Judge Bellis in Connecticut. That's a Suspension has not kicked in yet because um, he uh, appealed that decision, so it has not been finalized. That's why he's still practicing law. Uh, but nevertheless, he's still on this case, and he's the idiot who's making this request. So let me quickly explain why Donald Trump is not a viable person and he will make no difference in this trial. So let's first take a look at the Sixth Amendment. Does he have a right to call Trump under the Sixth Amendment? No, he does not. And that's because the Sixth Amendment includes something called the Confrontation Clause, which has been defined by the Supreme Court, specifically in Maddox v. U.S. back in 1895. And these are the three standards that were set to ensure that witnesses would testify under oath and understand the serious nature of the trial process that goes without saying saying, hopefully for most people, to allow the accused to cross-examine witnesses who testify against him. And that is the brunt of the Sixth Amendment. Every single person that the prosecutors present against you, your attorney has a right to cross-examine them. That's why after each witness is presented by the prosecutors, your attorney has a right to cross-examine them. So cross-examination is the thrust of of the Sixth Amendment, but it's only for people that the prosecution has brought against you. The last time I checked, the Justice Department did not put up Donald Trump as a witness against the Proud Boys. So you have no right under the Sixth Amendment to compel Donald Trump to show up here. Okay. And three, to allow jurors to assess the credibility of a witness by observing the witness's behavior. That's one of the reasons the witness has to show up in person and be put in the witness stand so that the jurors can examine their nonverbal as well as their verbal cues. That's one of the justifications. So in this case, the Sixth Amendment does not apply because all of the witnesses that have been presented by the prosecution, the defense attorneys had a chance to cross-examine them. And Donald Trump was not one of the prosecutor's witnesses or a victim or anybody relevant to directly relevant to this trial. Okay, so no, they do not have a Sixth Amendment right to face Donald Trump because Donald Trump was not a witness against them. So people don't understand the Sixth Amendment, apparently, because I've seen lawyers say that the Proud Boys have a Sixth Amendment right to confront Trump. So no, uh, Joe Biggs and Norm Pattis, Norm Pattis here, do not have a right to uh, compel Trump to show up. Now, you can ask the judge to just allow for a witness to show up by giving him a legal reason, but you still have to present a valid legal reason to the judge to allow him to issue a subpoena 
so that the marshals can uh, compel Donald Trump to show up. And the judge in this case is Timothy Kelly, who is a Trump judge. Despite that, Tim, Tim Kelly has been a good judge on every case that I've seen him in. He's been an impartial jurist. So I don't hold it against judges just because they were appointed by Trump. That doesn't mean anything. Attacking judges just because they're Trump judges are is ridiculous. Most Trump judges behave just as well as any other judge. So I don't like that attack that people on the left do. It's ridiculous. Two of the judges in the 11th Circuit who ruled against Trump in the mar lago case were Trump judges. Most Trump judges follow the law. So do not attack judges just because they were appointed by Trump. Look at what they're doing. Be rational and look at the conduct of the judges before attacking them and try to understand the legal reasons that they might be doing what they're doing. So this is not the first time that January Sixers have asked for Trump to be subpoenaed. Uh, a guy who, who just got convicted uh, uh, just recently, named Dustin Thomas, also asked for Trump, Giuliani, Bannon, John Eastman, Miller, Lynn Wood, and Powell to be subpoenaed by the court. And the judge in that case, uh, Reggie Walton, turned him down on the grounds of the Federal Rules of Evidence 403, saying that it would be prejudicial, more than probative, to have this person show up. And also, Putative witnesses are in inadmissible as valid witnesses in trial, according to Rule 403. Putative witnesses are people who are target witnesses, meaning that they can also be considered criminals who are included in this criminal enterprise that may be charged as future uh, defendants in this same scheme. So all the people that he wanted to call here are people who may be prosecuted in the future and can be considered by the DOJ as target witnesses. And the uh, testimony of target witnesses, he ruled, violates Rule 403. Rule 403 allows judges to leave out relevant evidence if the judge finds that that evidence may be unfairly prejudicial, confuse the issues, mislead the jury, or unduly delay the process of trial, waste time, or needlessly presents cumulative evidence. Under any of those circumstances, a judge may say that even if some evidence or some witness testimony is probative, I'm going to leave it out because I think it will be harm to the, harmful to the trial process. You have to be careful about that, uh, but nevertheless, ju judges know when it's warranted and not. So this was the judge's uh, conclusion here uh, for why he denied this. It is inconceivable that any of the speakers, meaning Trump, Giuliani, and the rest of them, will testify that they intended for the people they were addressing to commit the acts that the defendant is accused of committing, meaning the attack on the Capitol, in no small part because doing so could result in criminal charges being lodged against them. Thus, it is highly likely that they would either assert their Fifth Amendment privilege not to incriminate themselves or deny that they intended to incite the crowd to commit acts that occurred on the Capitol on January 6. However, even if the speakers were to do so, such evidence would open the door for the government to cross-examine the speakers about their intent in making the alleged statements. This would inevitably lead to a mini-trial on the issue of the intent of the speakers in making their statements, which, as the court concludes above, is utterly irrelevant to the impact of the statements on the defendant's intent. This reality is further reason not to permit the speakers to testify at the defendant's trial. So in this case with Dustin Thompson, the judge in question, Judge Walton, threw out his request to subpoena Trump, Giuliani, uh, Lynn Wood, and all the rest of the criminal traitor crew, and that was the right decision to make. And I think Judge Kelly should do the same thing here. But if Judge Kelly makes the mistake of allowing the Proud Boys request and tries to and allows the subpoena to go forth against Trump, what's going to happen? Well, what's going to happen is Trump is going to move to quash the subpoena. That's going to go into uh, a different court fight, a new court fight, and most likely going to go to the appeals court. That will take at least a month, maybe more, depending on the schedule of the court. That will delay this trial uh, because that will be a separate fight going on. And this trial will have to be put on pause until that's resolved. And even if Donald Trump loses that process, and uh, he's forced to show up to this trial, what is he going to do? He's going to take the fifth. You think he's going to talk openly and say, oh, yeah, I told these people to go and attack the Capitol. Trump is not going to say that. He's stupid, but he's going to listen to his lawyers this time because anything he says in this public criminal trial can be used against him in his own trial. OK, so he's going to take the fifth. He's not going to say a word. 
right? But even if he does speak, he's going to say, I never meant for anybody to do violence. That was not my intention. Whatever he's going to say, right? Nothing will be helpful to anybody. He's going to take the fifth or he's going to say, I never told them to do anything. I don't know any of these people. I don't know the Proud Boys. I don't know them. You know what he's going to do? Allowing Trump to show up has no probative value to this trial. And I hope Judge Kelly can see that. And he tosses this request out the window, just like Judge Walton did in Dustin Thompson's case. Even if Trump takes responsibility, which is never going to happen, these guys are still responsible for their own actions. Even if Trump did mean for them to come and attack the Capitol, even if he did tell them to come and attack the Capitol, you still have to take criminal responsibility for your own actions. You can't pawn it off on Trump and say, well, Trump told me to do this. If Trump asked you to jump off a cliff, would you do it? No, you wouldn't, because everybody has their own reasoning, their own mens rea, okay? And the prosecutors are busy proving the criminal intent of the Proud Boys who planned this attack, okay? Yeah, sure, they might have had the blessing of Trump, but they didn't have to do it. There are, there are thousands of people who stayed outside the Capitol, who also came there because they listened to Trump, but they stayed outside the Capitol. They never went in to attack. Remember that, okay? Let's be fair to everybody. Not all of the Trump supporters who showed up went into the Capitol and attacked the building. They did. The Proud Boys, they did. Okay? So many other people showed up because Trump told them to, but they never went inside the Capitol. They never attacked the police. They never broke windows. They never threatened to kill Nancy Pelosi. Okay? Many peaceful people showed up as well. We never want to forget that. I'm always fair to everybody. Okay? Thousands of people went in. Thousands of people stayed outside. They could have stayed outside. They didn't. They went in. That's on them. That's not on Trump. Okay, whatever Trump said that he's going to be punished for that separately on his own. You guys are responsible for your own actions and everybody has to take personal responsibility for their own crimes. And that is the bottom line. And that's why subpoenaing Trump has no probative legal value in this case. And I hope the judge rules against the Proud Boys here. Thank you so much for watching. As always, guys, hope you guys got something out of this video and uh, make sure to like the video, subscribe and hit the bell for future videos. Watch time is one of the most important factors on YouTube and for a growing channel like mine. So I really appreciate you guys watching all the way to the end. And if you have been watching my videos for a long time and you enjoy my content to find it educational, please consider supporting me on Patreon. You can join for as low as one dollar a month. I post all the legal documents that I use in my videos on Patreon so you guys can go read the highlighted legal docs that I use in PDF form in case you want to verify things for yourself. That is a service that I provide for my patrons. Also, you can message me directly on Patreon and ask me any questions you have regarding the content or other related matters. I spend very little time on the YouTube comment section due to time restraints and the toxicity that is usually found in the comment section. So if you have something important you want to ask me, Patreon is the best place to get an answer. I answer all my patron messages. So you will definitely have a real conversation there on Patreon. That is something I give back to the people who support the show. The more support I have from my viewers, the less I have to work with my other jobs. I work two other jobs outside of YouTube right now to support myself, but the more support I have from you guys that appreciate my content, the more independent I can become financially and the more cases I will be able to cover on my channel. I want to do more content for you guys and cover more cases, do more detailed videos. So if you enjoy my content and you want me to do more videos for you guys, the best way to support the show is on Patreon. And with that being said, thank you so much for watching once again, and I'll see you guys in my next video. As always, peace.